everyone and welcome to Sharpdress Gaming and today we're back with the week 3 battle for the Pokemon Global League. This is against Gearheart and the Seattle Star Raptors. Now for those of you who didn't know, we did battle Gearheart and the Seattle Star Raptors in the first draft league that we were ever in, the Primal Battle League. We battled them twice and uh, we ended up winning both those. So you can uh, be for sure that this battle is going to be rather uh, difficult because I'm sure he wants revenge for those. Now, unfortunately, I did have to do a post comp for this. For some reason, my recording software only recorded my computer's audio, which there is zero. I don't use my computer's audio for these battles at all, which, not that it would have helped if it if I did use the audio because the screen wasn't there. So, unfortunately, we do have to do this post comp, but uh, nevertheless, if you guys do enjoy this video, be sure to hit that like button on your way out or to the next sharp dressed video but we're gonna get underway here as we look at the teams I brought Needle King this is Choice Scarf Needle King with enough speed out speed Choice Scarf Needle Queen we also have Yachi Berry Landorus with max HP max attack so we can take that Ice Beam from a Life Orb Sheer Force Needle Queen and then return an Earthquake and knock it out we do have Cresselia max defense and with Calm Mind also carries Moonblast and Psychic no size shock because he does have Chansey. He also had Mega, Mega Sableye, um, so Cresselia was made to take care of Chansey and Mega Sableye. We also have Mega Mawile with the Sucker Punch, Play Rough, Fire Fang, and Iron Head. We have Dragon Dance, Scrafty, the same one from last week. And we also have our Thunderous, which has Thunder Wave, uh, Taunt, Psychic, and Thunderbolt. Uh, Psychic was for that Needle Queen. Now, if we take a look at his team, uh, the Pokemon he did end up bringing were Kabutops, Ludicolo, Typhlosion, Florges, Needle Queen, and Scissor. Now he does have that option for the Rain team with Kabutops and Ludicolo. That also uh, weakens Scissor's fire type weakness, but that does also weakness Typhlosion's fire type attacks. So I wasn't entirely sure what he wanted to plan there. He also has um, on his team Darkrai, which he did not bring. Darkrai is an S tier in this in this draft, which you can only have one of, and Dark Darkrai isn't allowed to use Dark Void, which is what makes him S rank instead of just banned altogether. He also has um, Tornadus, uh, Mega Sableye, Chansey, and I can't remember his other two right off the top of my head. Um. Yeah, I can't remember him. So we're just going to get right into this battle here. I'm going to hit that play button. And I believe I let off with... Actually, I do not remember who I let off with. But he leads off with Scissor. Oh, I let off with Needle King because it can uh, it can uh, damage everything on his team. We are Physical Needle King. So he's going to withdraw the Scissor. I went straight for Fire Punch. And I clicked that a little fast because I know he has Typhlosion. But he uh, luckily goes out into Ludicolo. So I get this Fire Punch off. It's not going to do a ton, but it does some decent damage. Um, because Ludicolo has more special defense than anything, and it is a neutral hit. Plus for sheer force boost. So I'm going to switch out. Because I don't know if he knows if I'm choice. If not, I'm still not going to knock him out. And Ludicolo Skull is going to do some damage. So I went into Thunderous. Because I wanted to be able to get a Thunder Wave off in case he was trying to set up his Rain Dance. Which he just went straight for Scald, and that's going to do a lot of damage to Thunderous. Um, but we're still going to be able to get that Thunder Wave off. So we can at least slow down this Ludicolo if he does want to set up the rain at any point during this game. So that way Needle King is still able to take it out. Unfortunately, he does get paralyzed this turn. He would have been able to take Thunderous out there. And uh, it would have helped him in the future. But uh, fortunately, he doesn't hit us there. So I'm going to switch out the Thunderous so I'm going to save him a lift for later. And I'm going to go straight into the Scrafty. Because I do have the Lumberry. So if he's able to burn me with Scald... Uh, we should be able to at least get one big attack off. And I do have Poison Jab on the Scrafty. Mostly for the Florges, but it also does this da the damage during the to this Ludicolo. So I just straight up Dragon Dance here. I could have went for Poison Jab, but I wanted that speed behind Scrafty. Um, and unfortunately, because of that, he goes for D Giga Drain and it gets me really low. So I do have to go for the Drain Punch to be able to uh, have some longevity in this battle. So I go for the Drain Punch. It does a nice amount of damage, but of course it's not going to knock out, doing over 50%, which gives me enough health to live one more attack from this Ludicolo. He's going to go for a Skull this time, which uh, still doesn't end up burning us, which is really nice. Uh, don't have to waste our Lumberry, 
in case he uh, tries to inflict us with a status later. He's going to switch the Ludicolo out though to try and save it. And he goes out into the Scissor, which isn't going to appreciate a Drain Punch. Uh, but it's, it's going to take it because this is a defensive Scissor. So he's going to live with over 50% there. But I do get some more health, which is really nice. Scissor is also carrying life orb, uh, or not life orb, leftovers, much like the Ludicolo is. He's going to go for a bullet punch here, but I do live that, and I get the knockoff. Knockoff off, so I can knock off these leftovers so he can get less recovery. He's going to go for another bullet punch. I just stayed in. Uh, I wasn't entirely sure how much the bullet punch had did to Scrafty, but I knew I didn't want to take damage on anything for no reason. So I let Scrafty go down there, and Needle King comes in. Uh, I figure I can just go for Earthquake here, because... I don't want to fire punch something that I can kill with an earthquake. And it's going to do nice damage to anything that wants to come in. Ludicolo ends up coming in, which does take it. Uh, but he's not going to take another one, and he is paralyzed. So Nido King will be able to knock out this Ludicolo if he stays in. And anything that's switched in uh, would die to the earthquake or take a lot of damage. Uh, possibly a two-hit KO. So we knock out Ludicolo. So there's one of the bigger threats down. He was paralyzed, so he was less of a threat than he was before. And the Kabutops comes in. Now, I stay in because I Kelt uh, Aqua Jet and it wasn't going to kill. And I do outspeed, but I completely threw off the idea of Focus Dash. At one point, I'm like, that Kabutops probably has Focus Dash. And he also has the weak armor, which really scared me because that ups his speed. Um, and he goes for the Waterfall, which is guaranteed to knock out my poor Needle King. So, that was kind of a misplay there. Uh, I should have... I, like, I don't really know what ne I could have switched out into. Probably Cristalia would be the only one that can take it, which is what I go into here. And I'm just going to go, uh, I think I go straight for a Psy Shock as he brings in the Florgis. Now, luckily I have Psy Shock for this Florgis because, as everybody knows, Florgis is a lot more specially defensive than it is physically. But it's still going to take that fairly well, considering I'm not invested uh, because I'm relying on the Calm Mines. I do set up the Safeguard in case he came into Toxic. Uh, I've had Safeguard mostly for the Sableye, and he ends up going for Wish here. Now I know he wants to pass that to his Scissor because it's at such low health, so instead of staying in, I'm going to just straight up switch out because my Cresselia cannot touch that Scissor, so it wouldn't be any use staying in. So I'm going to switch Cresselia out into Thunderous. Uh, hopefully I can get a Thunder Wave off on the Scissor, and then Mawile can come in and hopefully take care of it. Or another Pokemon of that caliber. So Scissor's going to come in and get that Wish. If I would have had Stealth Rocks up during this point, it would have been a lot better because he's switching a lot. And he's actually just going to switch right out into the Florgis again. So Florgis is going to take this Thunder Wave instead of the Scissor like I wanted it to. So with Florgis being here, I know I have to taunt it so it can't do its Wish passing. Um, we've seen Wish, I assume it also has Protect and another move that does not inflict damage, so I'm just going to taunt it. And we see that he had, he tried to go for the Wish again, possibly passing it over to Scissor once again. But I'm not going to allow that to happen for now, so I taunt him, and then I'm going to start going for Thunderbolts, seeing if he's going to switch out, or if he's just going to try and stay in and get the Moon Blast off on me, which is what I'm assuming he had at this point. He does get paralyzed, unfortunately, so Thunderous is going to be able to deal some more damage to this Florges, which is really nice. Here, I think I go for Psychic. I do, because I expect Needle Queen switch in. He doesn't switch in, but it still does some nice damage, and I, I was hoping for the special defense drop, but unfortunately I don't get it, and he gets paralyzed for a second time in a row. That's three times this match so far he's been paralyzed. To be fair, again, I wasn't paralyzing just to paralyze, I was paralyzing to slow him down, but that is a fortunate side effect to that status condition. So I taunt him again, and unfortunately he gets paralyzed for the third time in a row. Um, I'm assuming he was going for Moonblast all these times because he was taunted. Uh, and if he'd gotten those off, uh, the Thunderous wouldn't have inflicted about 75% to this Forges. He does finally get the Moonblast off, though. And that's going to take out Thunderous here. So, unfortunately, Thunderous does drop from the MVP race, bringing Melodic up uh, with... Melodic had three KOs and one death. So, currently it is our MVP over Sceptile, who has two KOs and zero deaths. Just because Melodic has more deaths. Now I'm going to bring out the uh, Mawile, and I instantly thought, this is dumb. I'm going to bring out Landers because Landers can, uh, Landers can uh, kill almost anything that he wants to bring out. Now, it kind of works out, 
because I I made the floor just leave uh, because he could uh, bring in a Cyflosion that resists Iron Head. But so that so then I had Landris out. But if I'd brought just Landris in, he might have just stayed in and sacked off the floor just. So I just go for the EQ here. It's gonna knock out the Kabutops that comes in to get sacked off because Typhlosion does not want to take that. Um, I'm not sure how the Typhlosion was built yet. Uh, I thought it would have had Hidden Power Ice, but he's gonna bring in the Needle Queen. I'm just gonna stay in because I know I can take a Life Orb and kill it back, or I can take an Ice Beam and then kill it back. But he switches out, expecting me to switch, so I can get another Earthquake off here on the Scissor, which is gonna do some nice damage. And I'm just going to stay in an Earthquake, uh, not wanting anything to take a Bullet Punch. And apparently he was expecting the switch, maybe. And he stayed in and got hit by the Critical Hit Earthquake. I don't think the Critical Hit mattered. It didn't look like it did. But he's going to bring in the Needle Queen now, wanting to get rid of this Landris. But like I said, we have that Yachi Berry, which I've been waiting to have work. And it's going to make us so Landris can live this Ice Beam. And we do not get frozen, which is perfect. And we get our Earthquake off which is going to luckily knock out this Neo Queen. So the big threat out of the way. Landris now has two KOs, um, and I believe he has one death. So he's he's getting up there. He's getting towards that race. Uh, the Typhlosion's going to go for the Fire Blast. Actually, no, wait. Landris is, uh, was the MVP until that Fire Blast, because he had three kills, one death, and then Fire Blast knocks out Landris. But now Cresselia comes in because this uh, Typhlosion won't be able to touch it very well. I'm just going to call Mind. I'm expecting him to switch, and if he didn't, I should take any attack anyway. And I get the Call Mind off, which is going to be really helpful against this Florgis, who would possibly take a Psy Shock at that range. It might have KO'd him. It doesn't look like it would have KO'd him from that range, so luckily I got that Call Mind off. So I can just Psy Shock. He won't be able to... Uh, do any shenanigans with this floor just because Psy Shock's going to knock it out, giving Cresselia a KO. And floor just does in fact drop. And then the Typhlosion comes in, and now I know that when I'm at plus one special defense, Typhlosion's not going to be able to hit, or he's not going to be able to KO. He misses the Fire Blast there, which is just salt in the wound. But he's just going to continuously Fire Blast. I don't know if he was Choice Scarfed or maybe Choice Specs. But you can see that Fire Blast is doing nothing. So even if it, that first one had connected, um, unless he hit me with a crit, uh, wouldn't have really mattered. But as we can see, after Leftovers and another Fire Blast, uh, it's not looking like he could have even KO'd with a crit. Uh, we would have been under 50%, but not enough to KO. So Cresselia is going to get the KO on Typhlosion, and that will be the game in our favor 2-0. So we pick up our second win of the primal not the primal sorry the uh, Pokemon Global League uh, I did use the uh, video to turn off game music in this video and if you guys want to uh, use that I will leave a link to the battle that you have to watch in the description below and I'm look actually I think I'll have a video I'm gonna put up a tutorial video on how to do that so you guys can watch that and figure it out but First off, I want to say good game to Gearheart. I got really scared there. That Kabutops was really scary with the weak armor. Um, Typhlosion could have been scary. That misplay bringing Mawile in ended up actually being a blessing in disguise because it scared out the Florges into the Scissor. Or actually, it was, it was into the Typhlosion who thought it could take a Iron Head, but I brought out the Landris. He wasn't entirely sure what kind of Landris I was yet. He pr thought I was Choice Scarfed when I was actually just Yachi Berry. So... Um, had the Typhlosion stayed in Fire Blasted and then the Needle Queen Ice Beamed, uh, we would have been in a very terrible position. But fortunately, it ended up working out for us. And next week, we go up against the Boston Silk Scarves, uh, who are currently 2 win 1, if I believe. So they're the same record as us. And I think we have a better differential than them right now. So this, and they're in our conference. So this next battle is going to be very important to the uh, outcome of our of our uh, of our season here so I'm gonna be prepping very hard for them and hopefully we have a very good battle against the Boston Silk Scarves next week if you haven't yet be sure to check out Gearheart's channel and Twitter which will be linked in the description below and we'll see you guys next week for week four of the Pokemon Global League thank you guys so much for joining me and we'll see you next time stay sharp
boys and girls. Hello everyone and thanks for checking out the video. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to click on the links on the screen. If you haven't yet, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to see more videos as they come to your way. And if you want to go check out the GoFundMe, that'd be great too. Bye!